Hello, everyone, and welcome to our universe. The Cave-In Universe. Oh, yes. We are your host. I'm Vinny. And I'm Kaylin. Of course, you can follow us at The Cave-In Universe on social media. And you can email us at thecaveinuniverse at gmail.com. Oh, yes. It's a big, big weekend for wrestling. We got an NXT takeover going on right now. We got AEW going on, AEW Dynamite going on right now. On a and Saturday. A, on a Saturday. And, of course, uh, we got SummerSlam tomorrow, yes. um, which is what we're going to talk about today. So thank you for joining us. This is going to be our SummerSlam predictions. Um, but I'm going to be honest with you guys. Um, I really haven't been watching a lot. Me. I've been out of it. I, I promise. I promise you guys that after after today, we're going to take the, we're going to take it a little more seriously when it comes to the wrestling episodes. Yeah, we decided. We, yeah, because basically we decided that we're only going to do wrestling episodes um, around the pay-per-views, basically yeah. like, you know, SummerSlam, um, the all the out NXT four. pay-per-view. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, yeah. So we discussed doing something special for the top four pay-per-views, um, which won't happen now, but I guess the next, uh, would be November would be survivor series. Yeah. So we'll do something special then, but, um, we, maybe we need a, we've been talking about that. We actually need to come up with some, some sort of, um, how do you say, I guess, foundation for these wrestling episodes. Yes. So if you join these wrestling episodes, uh, just l let us know. It's going to help us really put everything together how we want uh, the segments we want. Whereas to, you know, we don't just talk about the pay-per-views. We talk about everything that's been going on. Yeah. So before we get into SummerSlam, I want to talk about the WWE Thunderdome. Oh. This is pretty interesting, it honestly. Is this concept, is they yeah. really never been done, and, and honestly, it's crazy how it's like. Because let's face it, WWE it's not a sport, and it do, and it's not seen as a sport, which yeah. it shouldn't be. It's it's basically a televised um, or like a sport with a storyline. Yeah, there's sport involved, but at the end of the day, you're following a script. That's not sports. Sports yeah. is an unpredictable outcome based on you know athletic performance and strategy. Um, whereas to wrestling, of course, it's scripted, but what was the what was the point that I'm calling it? Oh, but in, in a world where we're, where we have this huge pandemic going on, it's like it seems like everybody's been trying to figure out a way to because you know there's no fans anywhere, so it's like everyone's yeah. been trying to figure out a way to like combat that to make it less awkward because that's the number one thing you think about with like all these sports and even WWE yeah. or AEW at oh, the start the when they it completely was it was so awkward. Yeah. That's honestly uh, what the fuck. Adobe, um, yeah, that's honestly what took me out of WWE in the first place was those first few pandemic episodes where it was like nobody there yeah. and it's just dead silent. Mm -hmm. It's like awkward, but then it's like you have sports that it works, like UFC. People love UFC with no audience because you can hear everything because UFC yeah. is obviously real, mm -hmm. so you can hear every hit, you can hear every slap, you can hear. They like hearing that you can hear the coaches talking, you can hear people like giving them, you know, uh, insights. You can, the fighters can hear the commentators talking, and yeah. they can change the way they fight because of that yeah. whereas they normally they wouldn't be able to hear that because all the fans i guess uh, it benefits them better because that's more like real i guess yeah exactly yeah. so it works with that but anyway my point is all these companies are trying to figure out how to you know you have the mlb putting like plastic cutouts or like cgi oh, yeah, fake people that. like a video that. game <laughs> and it's like wd is like we got the solution we're gonna spend all this money run up the fucking electric <laughs> bill and we're just gonna put <laughs> screens all around the ring and we're just gonna <laughs> stream in all these fans that you did you know some of the some fans were actually um like sleeping did you see that no. they're like i guess it was like trolling them but there was some fans they were like sleeping but when you signed up for that stream some people had to pay apparently and some people just like got a spot somehow oh uh they were like giving away spots at one point yeah but like they literally had like this whole list that you couldn't what you couldn't do and like you couldn't wear a w shirts I was and then like say i saw an article about that mm -hmm. that it was banned and then they basically even if you paid they can they can kick you off the stream for like any reason at all any time and then just replace you yeah. with somebody they else probably have people like literally their job is to watch just watch the people yeah. on the sh yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> jesus christ so you know when you have to switch it to somebody else and that too it's are just they it's just kevin dunn them? in front of the monitor jerking it Rest, wrestling fans would I know that, that. <laughs> would know who Kevin Dunn is. Uh, but I'm sorry, what were we saying? Are they like alternating screens, or is that like the same people? I all think the time? I want to say it's alternating. Because I don't know. I, I would have see to sit a lot and watch. Of people. Yeah. Yeah, I would have to sit and watch, and I think it's I think it's just like one side of the arena. It's not all the way around because. Oh, I thought it was all the way. I think they have so screens. Watch I think, again and pay attention. Yeah, I think they have the screens all the way around for like the 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 badass look of the entrances because uh -huh. that's one thing with the Thunderdome is that, of course they're not. That that was honestly a huge thing. Why another thing why they took me out of the pandemic is the fact that they 
they rec- would record around SmackDown, this small ass performance center. Yeah. And honestly, what took me out of that was the Randy Orton and Edge match. Once I realized that, like, literally the performance center is so small, there's just like a little roll of audience. Yeah. And then there's like the gyms right there. Yeah. And it's like you, everything's so cramped together. It's like, okay, <laughs> you're trying to have this huge, you know, show that's been around yeah. for, you know, years and it's years. And work. you're doing this tiny arena. So the fact they got a bigger arena and then they're doing this huge <laughs> thing with the Thunderdome. Um, it, it, it brings you back into it. Yeah. It does. It really does because it works. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like I was saying, I think they have screens all the way around. But basically, the way they shoot the cameras, the camera's only shot from like one angle. Oh, like, okay. I mean, it's, I there's multiple camera shots, but yeah. it's like there's like one crowd mm-hmm. that they, they play towards is what it's called. Yeah. You know, so that's, oh, I yeah, think that's I think where I they know have that all the side, people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah so. Um, and I wonder how are the people watching it? Do they like I'm sure there's no cameras in their direct spots or is there? No, I'm they're sure just they're watching just, it like just, just regular like TV. A live stream. Yeah. yeah, that's lame. That'd I be know, cool if they actually like watch like they had like a, just a tiny camera on each like slot yeah. of the and like they were watching it from that perspective. Yeah, that would be cool. Mm-hmm. But you know, I TV, agree. You know. But can they even? Yeah, I don't know. I think that would be way like more I said. I, I don't know. I don't know how that would work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah. So basically, my whole point in bringing this up is this is a we we talk we we. I say we, but I'm always torn on it. Whether mm-hmm. do we compare AEW and WWE? A and WWE yeah. are at this point are kind of different companies. You have basically, I mean, I hate to say it, and I, I'm not trying to make this sound bad in any way because, yeah, there's pros and cons to both. But if you had to sum it up, WWE is PG wrestling, AEW is more adult. Yeah. more adult type wrestling pg-13 that is a mean one is better than the other honestly uh, but at this point you're comparing apples to oranges i think but in the sense that all of this quote-unquote competition is good i mean this is literally a, an example of what competition does because at the start of the pandemic you had both AEW and wwe with no fans and yeah. they both had the dilemma what do we do mm-hmm. AEW starts bringing their own wrestlers sitting in the front row and that brings okay that's that's their step yeah then WWE goes okay we're gonna make it we're gonna make it look interesting by putting you know panel glassing all over the ring like a hockey game yeah and instead of our wrestlers sitting they're gonna be standing which of like course what? which of course got them like people were talking shit about that because they're like literally you're making these wrestlers like stand for hours yeah but they do camera cuts so I'm sure they get to yeah you know chill or Take you a know break or something yeah <laughs> I mean, they, that, I mean, that's that's basically the point is they're just like keep trying yeah. to like one up each other, mm-hmm. you know. So and then now, now what is AEW doing? Uh, they're actually bringing back fans. Yep. Yeah, it's crazy. Like what, 10, 10 to fifteen percent capacity, right? Yeah. That they're gonna allow. Yeah, and honestly, like I don't, I think, like I said, if AEW wasn't around, I would bet ninety percent that WWE would still be doing in the doing their their uh Raw and SmackDown in the performance center with no fans, no nothing, no no other no extras, nothing. Really? Without this competition this competition, that's what it does. It makes them want to one up each other. Oh, they're doing that. Okay, what do we gotta do now? The whole problem with WWE, why why so many why it was so huge at one point, why so many people got out of it, it's because they had no competition. Yeah. So what do you do when you have no competition? They monopolize. So laid back. Exactly. They're like, we can do whatever we want. Yeah. What else are they gonna watch? Exactly. You know, yeah, there's other there was other small companies, but it was nowhere as big as the production as WWE and a yeah. lot of people want that huge production. Yeah. The only the diehard wrestling fans are gonna watch, you know, a wrestling in a small arena, you know, and in well, nowadays you have NXT and stuff, but at that time it was only certain people that's gonna watch T N A, certain people that's gonna watch Ring of Honor. At that time internet wasn't even that big. Yeah. So there was only a certain people that they could get uh New Japan wrestling unless you got it through, you know, tape trading or whatever. But yeah, they had no competition. So they could do whatever they could have done they did whatever they in a matter of fact they did do whatever they want for yeah. years. That's why Triple H was champion for like nine years. What was Triple H's <laughs> old name? Oh, Hunter Hearst Holmesley. I know <laughs> we were watching some old Summer Slams, and I was showing you. I was like, "What <coughs> is that?" No, it's yeah. Triple H. <laughs> yeah, he literally was like, I remember from like 2005, probably, or even before 2005. Technically, you can say 2001, 2002. Oh, well, when he came back from his quad injury, Every, from that point to like 2010, he was always fighting for the title. Yeah, and it got kind of boring. But what else could they do? You yeah. know, what else were we gonna watch? But at that time, I mean, but now I'm looking back, I'm like, Triple H is badass, but yeah. You know, at that time, it's just like they're on your TV so much. You're just like, oh, my God, give me something else. Someone and then, else. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and then that's the time you had around that time. That's when you had 
uh, John Cena fight Randy Orton like literally like 400 times. Yeah. So it's just like, you know, now they're like, oh, shit, we need to do something different. Let's have Drew McIntyre as champion. Let's have Keith Lee as champion. Let's have, you know, Apollo yeah. Crews as champion. Let's give Sasha and Bailey both belts. They're literally taking all these chances that they wouldn't take if yeah. there wasn't that competition. Yeah. Anyway, we'll move on from that. So let's <laughs> get started into the actual uh, SummerSlam show. So we have uh, Apollo Crews versus MVP for the United States champion. Shelton Benjamin and Bobby Lashley are banned from ringside. Um, we talked about this last time we did a wrestling podcast. But like are how they really banned? Yeah, no, they're going to. Oh. Yeah, they're going to show up somehow. I was going to say, yeah, I already yeah. see that happening. They got to get their spot in the pay-per-view. Yeah. I'm like, oh, they told us not to come out, but here we are. Anyways. Yeah. Well, last time we talked about Apollo Crews. MVP Bobby Lashley, this storyline, um, I told you how I wanted it to ev- eventually end up Apollo Cru- or uh, Bobby Lashley versus MVP for the yeah. title. Now, th- at this time, I kind of like that Apollo Crews is getting more of a shot on TV because, mm-hmm. honestly, how we talked about independence and stuff, Apollo Crews was huge in the p- independence. Uh, and then when he came to NXT, he really... NXT, he was pretty big, mm-hmm. but once he came up to the main roster, there's a lot of NXT superstars. They just get lost in the shuffle, and there's really nothing for them. Yeah. Um, so. You think that's what happened to him? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah. There's lots of wrestlers that were huge in NXT. They were even NXT champion, and they went to, they get their, you know, that's the thing, the main roster call up mm-hmm. where they go to WWE, and there's, you know, you think they're going to do big things, but then, you know, yeah. there's so many people in the WWE roster they just you know and then you have Vince McMahon where NXT you have you know Triple H and his team watching you and pushing you and deciding things whereas to WWE you just have Vince McMahon you have Vince McMahon and his team but at the end of the day it's just Vince McMahon so if he doesn't like you he doesn't like you he doesn't care what you did in NXT even though that's his company too yeah Um, like he calls all the shots right like it's not just Triple H and Stephanie yeah he's the funnel like they you know there's writers and stuff to come up there all the ideas and once it gets to him, he's basically the deciding factor. And, and if he wants to change up whole things, oh, there's been reports of him changing the whole Raw script like two hours before the show Shit. because he was upset at something and then he just wanted to change everything. Damn. Like, yeah. How do you expect anybody to adjust to that? Exactly. And how do you expect your it. business to evolve like that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they evolved in production wise, but <laughs> it's like, you know, it's just like the thing for competition. I think that kind of gives them a kick in the ass now. Yeah. You know? Like I said, I like Apollo Crews getting the screen time, but I think this is a way to do it. So I'm going to go the MVP is going to win, and this is going to start a feud between Bobby Lashley and MVP because, like I said, MVP is supposed to be Bobby Lashley's manager, and he's champion. Bobby yeah. Lashley's not going to like that. So, And honestly, as much as screen time as Apollo Crews deserves, so does Bobby Lashley because Bobby Lashley has been around forever. He was in WWE, then he left, went to TNA, then he came back to WWE, yeah. and he's never really been been he's never been world champion he's never had a lot he hasn't had a lot of titles he was ecw champion but at that point that was like the third tier title yeah you know so he deserves a shout out the title and the spotlight too and then i actually have written down that i think apollo cruz would win i think apollo cruz like because i was serious when i was like when they were like talking about like that it was them and i realized that mvp was um bobby lashley's like manager type side guy you know yeah. it's like why would they just like give it to him like he's just there i feel uh, to me i feel like i've been hearing a lot more about apollo cruz so it would make more sense if he you know because he has the title right now right uh yes yeah see so like i feel like he's it's just gonna gain him more um you know you've said it before when somebody who already has the title just keeps it it's just giving them more you know positivity i guess yeah <coughs> yeah Hmm, interesting. And then well, you have Shelton Benjamin in there, too. So yeah. he's going to get mixed up in that title. I think it, well, it's going to end up two ways. Either they all end up in a, f- in a you know, um, faction together or yeah. they all end up in like a four-way feud. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. I don't know. Um, like I said, we're going to start watching more anyway. So we'll, we'll get the pieces together. Uh, we're going to keep track of this. So you said Apollo Crews because I want to see who gets the most predictions right. But, yeah, we'll eventually get a... Uh, Evolve or uh, evolve the gorilla, cave in universe evolve. uh champion. And yeah. when we do these prediction episodes, That'll whoever gets cool. it right, Create our own gets belt. to hold the title for that yeah. month or that week or whatever to the just next hang one. It? Is that why you looked over there? Yeah, I literally, I was like, <laughs> we can hang in that like, spot oh. or above the TV right there. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah. <laughs> the next match is actually all you because even though I've been watching AW, I really don't know much about either of these 
Street Profits People, yeah. and Angel Garza and Andrade. Yeah. All I know is is Selena is with uh, Selena Vega, real life real, real life wife of Aleister Black. Uh, she's with the you know she's basically Andrade's manager, and I know she poisoned uh, one of the Street Profits, oh, yeah, Angela Dawkins. Uh, yeah, that story they were talking about. Yeah, so yeah. honestly, like I said, I'm sorry, guys. I haven't been watching, and we're going to do better. Uh, Street Profits just won the title recently. I like the titles on them. Uh, they deserve it. Uh, so I'm going to go with them retaining the titles. Uh, Angel Garza and Andrade don't need to be tag team champions. They both are amazing <laughs> on their own. And I think this could start a feud between Andrade and Angel Garza. And like when we had Andrade in the Rey Mysterio feud, they just had awesome match after awesome match after awesome match. Yeah. So I think... Andrade and Angel Garza could be today's version of that, even though the Andrade Remistee was only a few years ago. Yeah. But the Andrade Angel Garza, if they get into a feud, they could literally have awesome match after awesome match after awesome match. Really? Oh yes, those guys are, and it's because like, they're both luchadors, and they're they're you know they're both luchadors, and they've been in WWE, so they kind of have that style. I that's what it is when you have that because WWE is, is there, there's different type of wrestling styles. You know, there's yeah. you know the Japanese strong style, uh, de, uh, like I said, lucha libre. And then WWE technically has like their own style of like yeah. wrestling themselves. Mm -hmm. I think that's why a lot of like luchador wrestlers that uh, be, you know stay in WWE for a long time become so good. Yeah. I think that's what it is when you mix the lucha libre versus the er, and the WWE it style, it just yeah. works so good. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. But anyway, because <laughs> like I said, both of these guys they can have just amazing matches together. Yeah. Um. And next we have. Uh, let well let's do both of them. So we have Oscar yeah. versus Bailey for the SmackDown Women's Championship, and then we have Oscar versus Sasha for the Raw, Raw Women's Championship. Now I don't know if they're going to be back to back. I doubt they are. Uh, they might have one in the beginning and then like one towards the end. Yeah. Um, probably. What do you think? Um, I hope Oscar wins both of them. She's just so cool. I yeah honestly which I'm sorry but we were kind of like laughing because oh yeah <laughs> like it's it's just so funny like because she's like she, I don't know I guess maybe that's like a, the transparency that she's like real like yeah. we're just watching a, a you her YouTube video her channel, that she yeah. puts on her channel of her trying <laughs> all these like exotic flavors of ice cream hot Cheeto ice cream yeah it was like a bunch of weird ones it was like what was it, it was like crayfish uh, yeah and there was another one it was like purple potato. Yeah, or something like that. Purple it, sweet it was potato just like or something. Super bright purple. Yeah, and, and she's we're like, what is that? She's. I'm like, you literally <laughs> are fighting for both top women's championships, in right? Like two days. In two days, and you're doing this. Like, it's <laughs> and so she's cool. just scarfing down all these <coughs> weird flavors of ice cream. Oh, uh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. She's awesome. But so I just don't like the way they treated her. Whenever was it at Extreme Rules or was it at WrestleMania? Or when? When was it? When? Probably Extreme Rules. Okay. Yeah. When they obtain both yeah, titles. Extreme Rules, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> that just pissed me off. They just did her wrong. So, I, feel. I uh, look, I'm, I'm with you. I want Oscar to win both titles, and it would be so cool. You've had, you've had Becky win both titles. You've had Os uh, Sh or Bailey with two titles. You've had Sh Sasha with two titles. I think Bailey was the only one that to have both Raw and SmackDown Women's Championship at the same time, though. Because oh. you remember, Bailey and Sasha only have two titles because they're also tag team champions. Oh, okay. But I think Oscar deserves that. Oscar yeah. definitely deserves that. She but does. I want that to happen, and it may happen. I may be wrong, but I don't think it will. Because it's at the end of the day, you got to remember it's WWE, and WWE is going to do what WWE wants, whatever is best for their business. Yeah. Um, Oscar's not probably like, how are you not going to give me the, the titles, yet you're going to send me out there twice tonight? Right. <laughs> and, but then, like I said, uh, we were talking about earlier, the fact that she has two matches sh either. Well, one, it could either show that there's really no other storylines and no other people they can put in there. Yeah. Or it shows that they believe in Asuka that much that they want her on yeah, the show exactly. twice. That's how I feel. And I hope it goes. Yeah. And like I said, the YouTube channel thing that we were watching, maybe that could add to her chances because it proves yeah. that she's popular. If she has, you know, 60,000 plus people watching oh, videos of day. her eating ice cream. Yeah. You know, That's all yeah. And one day. day uh, I want her to win, but I think she. I think I say she wins one, but not the other. Um, I hope they at least give her that then. Because <laughs> honestly, because if she wins one and not the other, she can go on her way with her thing, and then you could still have Bailey, the Bailey and Sasha yeah. feud to start to boil. Yeah. That maybe one, maybe you know, Sasha helps Bailey win her title. 
but when Bailey goes to help Sasha, something goes wrong and Sasha yeah. loses or Which vice versa. Or something like that. Yeah. So I'm calling Bailey keeps her title and Asuka beats Sasha for her title. And like I said, hmm. when Sasha has the Raw, Raw Women's Championship, she can go and do her own thing. And then you could kind of have that jealousy between Sasha and Bailey yeah. that, you know, only one of them I kept like their they've titles. I have been a team for so long, though. How are they just going to turn on each other? So be, when they were actually in NXT <laughs> before they came to WWE, they had, I forgot what year it was, but it was like two years ago. I think it was 17 or 18. Maybe it was even before that. God. They had a feud? But they literally had the best feud, and their match was literally, was named match of the year. Oh, wow. Because they, when Sasha and Bayley fight each other, mm-hmm. they, like, know each other so well, and they work with each other so well. Oh. So their matches are freaking, like, awesome. So they work good, they work good together, whether they're enemies <laughs> or friends. Yeah. And a lot of people like to see them as enemies because how badass their matches are. Yeah. So mm. we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. That sounds interesting now. Mm hmm. So <laughs> I think that's probably what's going to happen. Yeah. All right. Next. Uh, this one I'm kind of excited for. We got Ooh. Seth Rollins versus Dominic Mysterio. Yeah. Um, now that I was would be some shit if they gave it to Dominic. I don't think they will. I, mean, I don't think God, so either, Seth Rollins literally is like he's Seth Rollins. I know. <laughs> you know, he's literally like. At one point, he was he was the face of the company. And I would say, you know, yeah. but to say he still kind of is. He's like the new, right? Because, Basically. you know, how they've gone through John Cena, of course, and then Roman Reigns yep. had his time. Now, I feel like it's all about Seth Rollins. Yeah, Roman's, I don't know what's going on with him. Yeah. That's crazy. He just but, uh, trying to be safe, I guess, right? Yeah. Which, I mean, that, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, they're not going to, Dominic's not going to win unless it's like an upset which if they do it that way then that would make still make Seth not look bad by losing Dominic but no I'm not I don't I don't think so for his um, debut that would be yeah. crazy and Dominic's got to pay his dues well technically he has been with that kendo stick shot oh, and, yeah um, yeah that know, was pretty bad getting tossed around by Brock Lesnar a few months ago uh, he, he is paying his dues but yeah he's he's gonna lose but they're gonna, they're gonna do something interesting in this match I think yeah, we'll see. Um, I heard they uh, I don't know if it's gonna happen now it's probably not I heard you know, and I don't know if this is true because I wasn't even familiar with the website, but the, he's going to change his name mm-hmm. to Prince Mysterio Ooh. and he might wear, you know, start wearing a mask, yeah. which I'm for the mask because honestly, Rey Mysterio without his mask has a baby face and Dominic mm-hmm. has that same thing too where he, he has a baby looks like face. He just like a kid. He just looks like a kid. Yeah, yeah. And there's nothing wrong with it, but he just looks, he doesn't look like a yeah. larger than life superstar and he's exactly. young. A lot of people, they, they grow into that. It's, they're not going to have it right away when yeah. you're, when, when you're young. Yeah, I think wearing a mask is a good idea. It pays homage to his dad, of course, yeah. and then it covers up the baby face. So, because you know, you, you, you're gonna be wrestling, you gotta look tough and mean. Oh you yeah, can't look tough and mean yeah, with that baby face like that and right you know the Pedro <laughs> mustache. I'm sorry, dude. Yeah, but I'm excited for him to start wrestling because. I'm older than him, but I remember when I was little and he was like, they would involve him in the storylines when he was a kid. Yeah. And now all these years later, like he gets to, you know, wrestle. So the, oh, yeah, that kind of, it's cool. Oh, yeah, his dad. Yeah, I'm your poppy. <laughs> um, and, but yeah, even before that, like when Rey Mysterio won the world title, he was, he, they would show Dominic in the audience with his wife and stuff like that yeah. and his daughter. But uh, so, yeah, yeah. I've, I've seen, I've, I was not known him because I don't know him, but yeah. seen him since <laughs> he was a kid. And then now seeing him like now he's a legit wrestler, going to be a legit wrestler like his dad. That's just pretty cool. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. Nice. Uh, so I say Seth Rollins wins, but they're going to do something interesting with this. Yeah. Uh, I say who Seth know- Rollins, too. So we could both be wrong. Yeah. We'll or who, who knows what if Dominic, because. I don't know what's going on with Seth Rollins' group, but what if Dominic kind of betrays his dad and goes with Seth Rollins? I don't see follows that happening. Because that's what Seth Rollins is doing. He's like this cult leader. Like, yeah, I don't he's see like that Klaus. happening, though. No, I don't either, but that would be a good swerve. <laughs> that would be crazy. Yeah. All right, next we have Mandy Rose versus Sonya Deville. A couple stipulations. I don't know if they're still doing the hair versus hair. They really didn't make that clear because they even said Mandy already like got her hair cut short and then Sonya doesn't care if she gets shaved bald so I don't understand yeah uh, if they're still gonna do that but they're gonna do a loser leaves town uh, match leaves too WWE. He leaves WWE basically yeah. yeah and uh, no disqualification 
So I'm saying Mandy Rose wins this. If it's still hair versus hair, of course, Sonia already said she doesn't care about getting her head shaved. And I think with everything Sonia has been, Sonia Deville has been going through in her real personal life, we're not mm-hmm. going to get into that. But I think she needs some time off. I Yeah, that's my theory about it, too. Yeah. Definitely. I think that's what's going on. Yeah, because remember, people, it's a show. They're, she's not really going to leave and like quit WWE. She's just going to take some time off and come back. Yeah. But if they want to do a swerve, they could have Sonia win. Damn. What do you think? I think exactly what you think. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, that's definitely my theory. Just when you go through something, uh, like we said, we're not going to get into it, but something kind of traumatic like that, you just need your time. Yeah. 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 So I definitely think that's what's going to happen. So, so far, the only difference we have is the the Apollo Crews match. So that Apollo might that Cruz might be the deciding factor. What did you, who did you say was going to win? Street Profits. Oh, I said that too. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Street Profits going to win. Um, oh, and then two. We don't know with the Oscar and Bailey. Oscar could take both, is what I think. Oh, okay. You think she could just. Be I officially one. say that Bailey's gonna beat Oscar, but Oscar's gonna beat Sasha. Yeah. So okay. we'll see. Um, uh, basically the two main events. First one, we got the Universal Championship: Braun Strowman versus the Fiend. That one's gonna be spooky. I I like what they're doing with this. I like that they're doing yeah. the um. Like how Braun Strowman is kind of, you know, like I was telling you, every time somebody faces the Fiend, they change. Yeah. Um, so Which Braun I didn't Str- know. Yeah, yeah. So Braun Strowman's doing like, you know, he's the monster again, shaved his head, which I like that look for him. Yeah. And, you know, the, he's even crazier than the Fiend at this point. Um, so I really like that story that they're doing. It's awesome. And then the Alexa Bliss, I still don't know. Overall, she may play into becoming Sister Abigail. So you have that involved in the storyline, too. So they're kind of like playing it from many angles. So yeah. it's very interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, I think The Fiend's going to go ahead and take it. I, I think so, too. Unless you said and you even said, too, I don't know why he originally lost it in the first place. Yeah, he lost it to Goldberg. It's just fucking stupid. Yeah. Um, but it allowed Braun Strowman to get the title, and here we are. Yeah. Um, I say the Fiend wins. I mean, again, I don't. I'm glad they didn't they didn't have it for the title last time, but the Fiend really doesn't need the title. But maybe they want to give him the title because the Thunderdome and everything. They want to boost yeah. ratings and all mm-hmm. that, but. I don't know. Braun Strowman's doing a good job as champion, too. Yeah. I like his look. But then again, Braun Strowman may not need the title. I mean, he's jacked. Got a good Jeez. look. He's back with this. How you know, tall is he? Oh shit. He's like almost seven feet tall. I was going to say. Especially with yeah. the boots. He wears boots, too. So that makes like him even heels, taller. You know? Yeah, basically. Yeah. So I'll say I'll give it to The Fiend just because I don't want to see The Fiend lose for the title. Yeah. I say ag- The Fiend, too. Then again, if he wins, though, he's eventually going to keep uh, what do you do? Keep the title on him? You're eventually going to have to take it away. Yeah, I know. But then again, the fiend could be seen as like another Brock Lesnar figure where the person who beats the fiend for the title, you know, that's what they should have done in the first place. But of course they, yeah, Goldberg beat him. But yeah. the person who beats the fiend is like the, Oh, like that's the guy. Yeah. You know, and mm-hmm. a lot of people say that could be Big E. If Braun Strowman beats the fiend and retains the title, then that just goes to show how much confidence they have in Braun Strowman that he is the guy. But yeah. like I said, they you don't need that because Braun Strowman already is the guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? If he loses to the fiend, that's not bad. Yeah. It's not gonna exactly. take that's not gonna diminish him in any way. He's yeah. still gonna look like a monster Unlike that other he is. People. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Beat by the fiend. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, um, what do you think? Um, the fiend, one hundred percent. I hope with the at fiend least. Too. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. Okay. I don't know. Randy Orton versus Drew McIntyre. What do you think? I feel I have written down Randy Orton. Yeah, I just I don't know. We were just watching Randy Orton win his first world title at SummerSlam oh, yeah. against Chris Benoit. Oh yeah. You know, so he has uh SummerSlam is important to him and you know and it would me it would make sense, you know, this yeah. SummerSlam for him to win the title again. Yeah, my thing with him was like shit, like we're watching him SummerSlam, what year was it? Two thousand four? Uh, yeah yeah 2004 and i'm like damn like he's been around this long and look he's getting ready to have another uh, summer slam for the world for title, the title. <laughs> yeah and he's so probably just, gonna win that just when we saw that i had my mind made up like oh definitely randy orton i think yeah they'll probably give it to him but i uh, just the only bad part about that is that you know they give drew mcintyre the, the bump he's basically was just a transitional champion <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know there's nothing wrong with him either he's good too yeah but I mean, is he, re- is he really making me, you know, sit in front of the TV? Not really. Exactly. And that mu- that might be the problem. Mm-hmm. Randy Orton's champion. I'm gonna see what's going on. Yeah. So I'm thinking Randy Orton. Yeah, coming you from know. a true wrestling fan, <laughs> here, guys. <laughs> That's what I mean. But yeah. I mean, it, it's su- it's it's like they said, it's bittersweet because yeah, that would be cool to see Randy Orton, but then that just means that I'm just 
I'm not I'm not in my mind allowing myself to move on to the new guys. Yeah. Because Randy Orton, like I said, we've been around forever. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, not forever, but, you know, 2004, I was in fourth yeah. grade. He was around a little before that. Shit. But then again, is that my fault? You know? Yeah. Entertain me. Exactly. Show me something. It's not. Yeah. You know? Hmm. But anyway. They should so, know. Yeah. So I'll give it to Randy Orton. But we got to remember uh, Otis is still holding the money in the bank briefcase. So he could technically cash in on any of these matches. But I, I did not realize whenever you told me that that he s- has had it for this long still. I know. He hasn't cashed in. I guess I forgot. <laughs> yeah. So I don't think so. I don't think he's going to get involved in these matches because that I just feel like what what are they doing with him? Yeah. You know what? Because that's the thing is like. He's a great Otis is great. He's he's charismatic. He's freaking awesome. I love when he's on the screen. Yeah. Uh love watching his stuff, but it's like he doesn't really fit in with any of this stuff, you know. Have what you I mean? seen him at all since SummerSlam? Uh he was just on SmackDown. I mean not SummerSlam. The Money in the Bank. Yeah, he was just on SummerSlam. Oh, he yeah, was. he's he's still on. On SmackDown? Um, we keep saying SummerSlam. I mean SmackDown, <laughs> sorry. But uh, yeah, he just doesn't just like he doesn't fit in any of this. But that's the beauty of the Money in the Bank briefcase. You can just you insert yeah. yourself in anything so yeah uh, we'll see they said there might have some other matches but i don't know who who if were they, they if i forgot if they do have it they'll be on the pre-show yeah so it's whatever oh, all right well we're oh, gonna wow. have an episode tomorrow um yeah going over all of these anytime there's a wrestling pay-per-view um of course we're gonna do the prediction episode and then right after the pay-per-view airs we come over here Sit down Literally. this table and just, you know, a bonus <laughs> episode because well, it could be, yeah, what's well, fresh in mind could be 10 minutes, could be 20 minutes. Sometimes it goes 30, 40 minutes, but yeah, we'll see. bonus episode, we'll talk about um, whether our, what our predictions were and then we'll um, just review the pay-per-view. Yeah. Well, all right, guys. Um, so, yeah, those are our predictions. Let us know uh, your predictions or your thoughts on SummerSlam. Or if, if you'll be watching. Or if you'll be watching. Um, that's right. Anything else, Caitlin? No, I think we're good. Nice. Gonna make some baby back, baby back, baby back. Chili. Chili. Baby, baby back, back ribs. ribs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. They're not yeah. chilies, by the way. They're just regular baby back ribs. Yeah. I've, <laughs> I haven't had baby back ribs in a while. Because, like, I like ribs, but I just yeah. don't like how messy they are. Oh. My hands get all sticky. I'll get you some gloves. Yeah. And a bib. <laughs> bib. Yeah. And some alcohol wipes. Yeah. <laughs> some wipes. <laughs> <laughs> uh anyway that sounds good because i'm kind of hungry right now nice all right so Let's yeah we'll g- we'll go do that um so yeah a little a little shorter episode than normal guys but yeah we hope you enjoy SummerSlam. let us know if you need anything from us and you we're here for bye guys